right, so welcome to this Jenkins online meetup for Google season of docs, documentation as code, uh, or documenting Jenkins on Kubernetes. I'm gonna share my screen and let's take a look at some slides. So here's what we've got today. This is documenting Jenkins on Kubernetes, and we're very grateful to have Zinab Abu Bakar presenting to us today. Um, Zinab has been mentored for the last several months by a team of three of us from Jenkins Documentation, and we're looking forward to her presentation today on her experience with Google Season of Docs and what it means to do Google Season of Docs and what it's meant to her to do Jenkins on Kubernetes documentation. Uh, my welcome, and then we're going to turn it over to Zenob, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let let you take over, Zenob. Oops, you're muted. Okay, so let me know if you can see my screen. We can, looks great. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with um, presenting a slide, just um, a little bit of information on the product, um, the project overview, um, what we're able to achieve, then um, we'll branch to a short demo before coming back um, to discuss challenges, lessons learned, and then um, a Q&A session. So I'm going to start um, with the slides. Sorry, let me just switch that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, about me, um, a developer at InterSwitch um, Group Nigeria. InterSwitch is a fintech um, company in Nigeria. Um, also, an open source, um, the open source pro programs manager for SheCode Africa, a non-profit organization um, specialized in um, creating opportunities for women in tech. And I'm also a technical writer. You can find me on Twitter and GitHub at Zaycode. So um, today we're going to be discussing the problem statement for this project, um, what informed this Google Season of Docs project. Um, we're going to look at how we plan the solution I broke down this part into two because it was majorly two phases for me. That's before getting accepted into Google Season of Docs, what were the things I did to prepare for this project and what were the things we did to prepare after getting accepted before the documentation development phase. Um, we're going to look a little bit at the doc documentation development phase. What did we do before we branched to a short demo, discuss challenges, lessons learned, and explain a session. So I'm going to start with the problem statement. So um, when I started contributing to Jenkins during the Google season of Docs, and technical writer exploration phase, there was no central documentation for Jenkins on Kubernetes, and this was the problem. So um, users, um, Jenkins on Kubernetes users did not really have any central location on Jenkins.io to find information relating to Jenkins on Kubernetes. And that was why we decided to work on this project, considering that um, Jenkins on Kubernetes is a popular team team for Jenkins user and um, that's why we took up this project. So um, planning the solution. Um, before I got accepted um, to Google Season of Docs, um, I went through the um, list of project ideas and I was particularly um, enthralled by this particular project to document um, Jenkins on Kubernetes. So um, the first thing I did was to make some research, um, um, find out um, a lot about Jenkins on Kubernetes, see if it was something I could actually do, I could actually take up. So um, one of the reasons why I chose this project was because um, I had um, an interest in 
uh, Jenkins because in the organization where I work, we currently use um, Jenkins and Spinanka for our CICD pipelines. And I had a thrill in setting up Jenkins when I had the opportunity to. So um, seeing this project was more like an opportunity for me to understand more of Jenkins and to get more into um, DevOps. So I did my research and um, I worked on my project. Um, um, let me just um, show you um, something. So it's not like I'm just talking, talking, talking. So um, okay. So this is what my project proposal look like. In my while working on my project proposal, some of the informations I um, put in there was um, project abstract, what I thought was the problem um, with Jenkins on Kubernetes um, documentation on Jenkins.io. Um, I did an analysis and in this analysis, what I did was to create a sample structure of what I thought um, the Jenkins on Kubernetes documentation should look like on Jenkins.io. So um, in this structure, I gathered um, all the links I had, um, all the links that I had found from my research. I gathered them into the structure to help me um, work on the content when the time um, came. So um, after working on the structure, um, um, yeah, after working on the structure, I submitted my proposal. So um, when I got accepted into Google Season of Docs, these were the things we did. Um, in preparation for the project. So pre-planning of the project um, in this um, phase, this was where we um, discussed and agreed on communication channels. Um, this was where we um, discussed um, things that would probably be necessary for the project, like permissions and other useful um, tools or resources that would be um, useful for the Jenkins on Kubernetes project. After that, we discussed knowledge transfer. What were the um, knowledge um, sessions that I was going to need? What, where was I lacking um, in knowledge to be able to properly work on this project? And this was where we agreed um, to have knowledge sharing sessions on Helm and uh, Katakoda during the Google Season of Docs program, um, we refined project goals. So here we kind of um, expanded um, on my proposal and the structure I had created. So we looked at it, I and my mentors looked at it and we decided on the content that were necessary to be there and the ones that were in there. And we kind of like um, also um, rated it according to the most important. So I could start working on the most important and go down the list. Then finally, we worked on um, announcing the project here and um, we announced it on social media handles. I also wrote um, a blog post to announce the Jenkins on Kubernetes project and what this project was going to entail. Now, during the um, documentation development phase, um, I broke this down into three. So the first part is the knowledge sharing session. So um, here I had um, the opportunity of um, having two knowledge sharing sessions from two um, very, very knowledgeable people. One of them being um, my mentor and org admin and the other person, um, Thorsten. The first person, Maki, Maki Jackson is my mentor. He gave a session on Helm and Katakoda. And um, the second person, Thorsten, was is a member of Jenkins community. And he also gave me a knowledge um, sharing session on Helm, which really helped me in properly documenting um, Jenkins on Kubernetes. Um, after that, I and the mentors worked on a skeleton. So um, this was where the initial structure that I created and I and my mentors refined during the planning phase, this was where it actually came to life. So what we did 
in this um, session, in this um, part, was to create a skeleton on Jenkins.io with all the content that we actually intend to document and mark them with work in progress um, tags. So the idea was for us to continue um, updating, updating this um, skeleton as time went on. So um, on Jenkins.io here, I'm just going to show um, some of the sections that we added to Jenkins.io during, during the, um, in the skeleton. So we're able to work on some during the Google Season of Docs program, but um, some of them are still currently pending, which we still intend to complete as time goes on with um, uh, the help of the mentors, um, community, and other people out there who would like to contribute to um, Jenkins on Kubernetes. So um, under the installing Jenkins section, this session was one of the sections, um, was one of the sections we added um, under using Jenkins. Um, no, sorry, that would be managing or system administration. Okay, yeah. so under uh, system admission, yeah. So um, this is an example of a section that we were not able to complete um, during the Google season of Docs program. As you can see, it's still showing um, a work in progress, but um, hopefully with time, we intend to complete this. Um, then um, lastly, we went on to um, I went on to start working on the actual documentation. So this was where um, I worked with the mentors to add um, content to the skeleton that we had previously um, created. So um, now we're going to go through um, a short demo um, on installing Jenkins on Kubernetes using Jenkins operator. And in this demo, we're going to use the documentation that I worked on. We're going to follow the documentation through and through and see that um, the documentation actually works. Yeah. Okay, so um, under the installing Jenkins section. Um, so um, before I go to the demo, I'd just like to give a um, brief summary of the sections that I was able to add. So um, I was able to add a um, section on installing Jenkins on Kubernetes. And in this section, it covers um, three methods. We have um, using Helm, using um, Gen using a set of YAML files and um, using the Jenkins operator. So in this um, demo, we're going to be um, working with the installing Jenkins with Jenkins operator section. So I'm just going to bring up my terminal. Yeah. So we can get right to the demo. So, okay. Um, so First of all, what's the Jenkins operator? So the Jenkins operator is a Kubernetes um, native operator which manages um, operations for Jenkins on Kubernetes. It is easy to install with just a few manifests and it allows users to configure and manage Jenkins on Kubernetes. So some of the advantages that um, the Jenkins operator provides is that it provides um, and out of the box integration with Kubernetes that you have the um, Kubernetes plugin pre-configured. Um, it also provides um, pipeline as code. That's a declarative way to version your pipeline. Then extensibility via Groovy scripts and configuration as code. And finally, it provides um, security. So um, for you to use um, the Jenkins operator to install Jenkins, the one of um, the prerequisites is the Jenkins operator. You need to have the Jenkins operator installed on your local machine. So um, to install the Jenkins operator, you need access to a Kubernetes cluster. And if you don't already have access to a Kubernetes cluster, don't worry, we have a section um, just above. Um, Clicking this link, okay. I think we have a section just above here. Um, 
that shows um, how to create yeah, a Kubernetes cluster. So if you don't already have a Kubernetes cluster, you could just come up to this section and follow the steps here to um, achieve that. So I already have um, that installed on my PC, so I'm not going to need to do that. So the next thing we're going to need to do is to configure a custom resource definition. And um, the custom resource definition um, enables users to add custom APIs to their Kubernetes cluster, which can be used like any other native Kubernetes object. So um, to install this, we are going to use um, the CRD file from the official um, Kubernetes operator repository. So um, this is the command we're going to run. So I'm just going to run this on my box to install that. Okay. So I'm just going to wait for that to yeah, so um, um, I hope my terminal is not too tiny. I just want to make sure that we can see the content on the documentation and also on my terminal as I go. So um, from the output here, we can see that it has installed two um, um, CRDs here, Jenkins.Jenkins.io and Jenkins image George Jenkins. Um, IO. So after doing that successfully, we're going to deploy Jenkins operator. So to deploy Jenkins operator, um, there are two options here that we could use. We could decide to use YAML files or the Helm chat. But um, for this demo, I'm going to be using um, Helm chat to install um, the Jenkins operator. So what's a Helm chat? A Helm chat is a packet package manager for Kubernetes and its format is called a chat. Helm charts um, basically provide a push button deployment for um, push button um, function to deploy and delete applications. So it makes um, the adoption of Kubernetes apps easier. It helps you to manage your Kubernetes applications um, easily. So, um, um, for you to use Helm, I need to mention, I forgot to mention this. So for you to use Helm, you need to make sure that you have Helm installed already on your PC4. In my case, I already have Helm installed, but if you don't, um, there's a link in the documentation. Um, clicking this will take you to Helm's, um, doc, um, will take you to a documentation, yeah, on how to install Helm. So um, since I already have, um, Helm installed. I'm just going to go straight to um, configuring Helm on the documentation. Yeah. So where is it? Yeah, exactly. So since I already have um, Helm installed, okay. So before I'm, I configure Helm, I'll create um, a namespace for the operator. So um, also on the documentation, we have a section that explains um, how to create a namespace. So I'm just going to run that command, kubectl create um, namespace. So I'm going to be doing my deployment in the Jenkins namespace. Okay. So, Zenab, are you okay if, if I we ask questions as you're proceeding as panelists, or would you like to just oh you're you it's set sorry I'll I'll bother you later. <laughs> you could you could answer ask the questions also if you'd like to, whichever one is I, fine with me. Uh, actually, you, this is great. You just keep going. You're doing wonderfully. All right. Thank you. So um. From my terminal here, we can see that my namespace Jenkins has been um, created successfully. So I'm just going to configure Helm. I'm going to add um, Jenkins, the Kubernetes um, operator Helm chat. So I'm going to do that by running this command here. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so um, I already have this installed on my box, so that's why I didn't install. Jenkins already exists with the same configuration. So if you don't already have this before, it's going to show you that um, your Helm chart has been added. So I'm going to move on to the next step, which is to install the Jenkins operator in the Jenkins namespace. And we're going to be using, um, yeah. So, okay. So I'm going to be um, creating this in the namespace I created um, Jenkins. Okay, so um, when you're installing um, installing um, with Helm Chat, so um, you also have the option of um, customizing why you install. So you can add labels, you can add um, annotations. Yes, so you can see that my Jenkins operator was successfully deployed. So um, as I was saying, you can add um, labels, you can add um, annotations to customize your installation. That's um, to customize the official um, Jenkins value. In this installation, I've used um, the values in the official Helm chart um, repository. I didn't make any changes. But while you're doing yours, depending on your needs, you can um, customize the values um, using labels while deploying. So after we successfully installed the Jenkins operator, the next thing is to now deploy our actual um, Jenkins instance. So to deploy, deploy this, we'll need um, a YAML file, um, a Jenkins instance YAML file containing the details, the name, the image we're going to use for our Jenkins and other information for a Jenkins instance. So on my PC, um, as you can see, I already have my Jenkins instance file here. Um, so um, there are a number of, you could use um, whichever IDE or text editor you prefer to edit your YAML files, but um, I just have a preference for using um, Visual Studio Code for YAML files, but there are other IDs you could use out there like um, IntelliJ and others. And if you like to format your file, your YAML file, there are extensions or even online formatters that you could use to properly format your YAML file. So, um, and I'm currently in the directory where I stored my um, Jenkins instance, so yeah. So when I check, you could see that my Jenkins instance.yaml is stored in this directory. So I'm good to go. Next thing I'm going to do is to um, create my, to deploy Jenkins using this file. Okay. And I'm going to do this in the Jenkins namespace I created, copy. Yep, so we can see that my Jenkins instance has, be, has been created. So to um, show that this, we can check on um, QCTL get calls. Namespace Jenkins to see our Jenkins. Yes, so we can see that my Jenkins example um, instance is up and running. My operator, Jenkins operator instance is running. My Jenkins example um, instance is also running. So this Jenkins example is the instance I just created. So if you check the file, you can see that the name of the file here is example. So that's why it's Jenkins example. If you named your own file Jenkins, it's going to be Jenkins Jenkins. If you named it Jenkins Ski, it's going to be Jenkins Jenkins Ski. So depending on what you named it. So um, my pod is not yet ready because normally when you do this, um, Jenkins is going to it's going to install um, a couple 
of plugins. So until this is done, um, pod is going to be in this place. So I'm going to see if I can see the logs, if it's possible for me to see the logs and see how our pod is doing. Yeah, so we can see um, it's installing plugins and this is not done yet. So that's why our pod is in that state. So um, for you to be able to access your Jenkins, obviously you need to get um, the login credentials to do that. And to do that, we're going to run this. So um, secret name here, Jenkins operator credential, credential name. So credential name here being the name you used in your Jenkins instance file, as I explained earlier. So in this case, my credential name is going to be example. So I'm going to run this um, to see, to get my credentials. And I assume, see now, oh, that, the, okay. yeah. that until the plugin downloads are complete, it probably has not yet started the Jenkins process, has it? I thought that the plugin yeah, ex download exactly. process was. So, um, yeah, so um, Mark, you're right there. So, because um, my plugins has not installed, and um, this takes um, this plugin installation takes a lot of time here because of my internet internet connectivity and all that. But um, once um, the plugin is installed successfully, you should be able to get your credentials, and you can connect to Jenkins using either Minikube through the service or you can port forward and access the actual Kubernetes cluster. But I'm just going to go ahead and um, explain something about um, readiness proof before I end the demo session. So we're going to describe Jenkins, um, describe this um, Jenkins board and see what um, the information that we have on the pod. Yes. Okay, so um, let's see. Um, so it looks like um, pulling field not, not successful. So it's saying it's a started. Let's check once again. Okay, so it's still not up yet, um, and I'm going to assume that it's still um, installing. So um, what I wanted to explain is there are some instances where um, when you describe your pod here, because um, Jenkins is not yet ready to handle requests, it's still um, um, installing plugins, you might see um, a warning here or an error here that tells you readiness proof failed, unable to connect. So what this means is that um, Jenkins is up, but it's not yet um, ready to handle requests. So um, basically Kubernetes has um, three types of health checks, um, the startup check, the readiness check and the liveness check. So the startup check is um, basically to check if um, 
the application has started. And if it has, it moves to the readiness group. So the readiness check um, checks if the application is ready to handle requests. If it's ready, then Kubernetes sends um, requests to this port. But if it's not, then um, Kubernetes keeps trying. So um, when an application fails a readiness check, Kubernetes doesn't delete the port. It just um, keeps retrying um, until the port is ready to handle um, requests. Why um, the last one, which is a liveness check, is when um, Kubernetes checks the application to see if it's actually up. Um, so when an application fails a liveness check, Kubernetes um, deletes that pod and creates a new instance because it's assumed that the application is dead. So um, I'm going to end my demo session here. And yeah, so we're going to continue with this slide. So um, what are the challenges I faced during um, during this project. So I think the major challenge I faced was um, using <laughs> a Windows laptop. So um, there were a lot of, um, I had some difficulties running some commands, um, but um, the good side of this challenge is that it gave me the opportunity to actually work on different environments and test the documentation on different environments to ensure that um, whoever is using a Windows PC or a Linux PC would be able to scale through and use the documentation without um, having any issues. So if you go through the installation guide, you see um, that there are some places where I put options like option one and option two. These are um, instances where probably I had issues using one option on Windows and it worked on Linux, or I had issues using one option on Linux and it worked on Windows. So um, what are the lessons learned? I learned more about the Jenkins project. I learned more about Kubernetes, Helm, Jenkins operator. And this project also helped um, improve my technical writing skills, um, communication skills, because I had to communicate with my mentors um, constantly. And even from um, the exploration phase, when I was working on my proposals, on my structure, I had to share the structure with um, members of Jenkins community, my colleagues at work who I knew were um, good at, um, who, who were good at DevOps and who I knew used Jenkins on Kubernetes um, properly. So I shared this structure with them. I shared my proposal with them to review and um, make comments on and suggestions on what information they think would be best to add to this documentation. So um, this project definitely improved my um, collaboration skills also. So um, that would be all for me. So um, you can ask your questions and I'll be happy to answer them. And if I can't, I know one of my mentors will be able to help me. Thank you. Thank you, Zinab. So we do have one question online, actually. And this one, I, I confess, we may have to call on the mentors. I'm not sure. So the question asked was, how, how can we manage adding new plugins and upgrading plugins after the Jenkins installation is done? Can we manage Jenkins plugins as code? So uh, do you want mm. to give some commentary on that? Do you want to call for mentors? What, what's your preference? Okay, so um, I'll just give a little so my mentors can help me complete it. So I know when you're using Helm to install Jenkins, as I said, um, there are two um, instructions you can use. You can use a, either use the Helm install or Helm upgrade. So with the Helm upgrade command, you can use that to um, add additional plugins and even additional functionalities to your Jenkins instance. So um, I think my mentors can take the rest you of are, You are exactly correct. If you add that to your, uh, your template for your charts in Helm, you can then run the Helm update and it will update those plugins. You could add a little bit extra and keep that in Git and use Git op. So anytime there is a change to the repo, some type of webhook and delivery will push those changes out to a given cluster. Thank you, Mikey. Okay, so, so it is managing 
the plugins as code works and and do I then maintain specific versions of those plugins in a list somewhere? How does how does that feed how does that feel to the developer who's trying to trying to get a new plugin upgraded in their Kubernetes installation? You could some I've seen some individuals use like requirement text files that they'll put the versions in and they can have their helm chart call that. That is totally doable. Okay. Thank you. Now, Zena, for me, you mentioned that you were running on Windows. And I confess I'm very commonly used to seeing people run on Linux or Mac OS and not as frequently on Windows running Kubernetes. And yet you showed us the entire demonstration on, on Windows. Um, any other insights you want to share with those users who are Windows users about, hey, do this or do that, get this experience or that experience? Hmm. Well, hmm. for me to be able to use Windows, I think one thing that helped me was um, actually a lot of research, trying this, trying that. And um, I actually had to, um, when I see a particular command in Linux, I try to research if there's a corresponding command in Windows. And if there's not, I find an alternative. So um, for instance, there is a command here. Um, I'll just go to Jenkins.io, sorry. Uh, yep. Yeah. so, okay. I just want to give an example of how I was able to walk around some of the issues I had. Okay, so yes, for instance, um, this section on getting credentials. So when I try to run this um, command on my Windows box, I, I get an error that um, base64 um, is not installed or does not exist or something like that. So what I do do is I take out the base64 part and actually get the um, secret in base64 and I just go to um, base64 encode.com and I decode um, the secret by myself just to get um, work around that. I know there probably might be better solutions but um, but that's just basically how I do it. So when I find a stumbling block I just do some research and hopefully we're able to work around that. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, Windows is so were you an expert in Kubernetes before you started this project? What, what, what was it like for you to begin on a project like this? Were you already deeply skilled with Kubernetes? And so it was just doing what you'd already done? Or did you have a bunch of things you had to learn? So, um, I won't say I was deeply skilled, though I wasn't, at least I had some background knowledge of um, Kubernetes because um, again, where I work currently at InterSwitch, we use Kubernetes a lot. That's where we deploy our applications. So I'm familiar with um, creating deployments, creating config maps, um, doing some edits, um, little, little commands like that. So I was already familiar with that before I started working on this project. But um, obviously when I started working on this project, I had to do more research um, on Kubernetes, try and learn more, um, learn more about things like health checks, liveness probes and all that. So those were not really things I was, I was so familiar with before this project, but um, this project helped me understand better. Yeah. Thank you. So now, now the install guide lists three different forms of install methods, Helm, Base yeah. YAML, and Operator. Are there any guidance you want to give the audience on when they would choose one of those versus the others, particularly for somebody who's not a Kubernetes expert? Me, for instance, I'm not expert in this. Is there <laughs> one I should prefer rather than another? Okay, so... Um... Well, I'll just say this is um, a personal um, evaluation. I'm not going to say is um, general. So um, what I think is before you um, decide on which method you want to use, you need to analyze your midterm goals. Do you want to be able to deploy faster? Do you want to change your continuous deployment pipeline regularly? Or do you just want something simple um, to begin with and then focus on the details later. So when you're able to answer these questions, then you can then decide on, okay, hey, I'm going to use YAML files because if 
um, you're going to be using YAML files, I think I'll advise that it's on small projects because you you know you're going to have to be setting up um, things like your deployment, service, ingress, percent volumes, and all that. You're going to have to, have to be applying um, files for all that. And if you have a lot of um, apps that you're managing on Kubernetes or you have a lot of things that you want to do or your project is very very large at the end of the day this could um, become difficult to manage so depending on how large your application is or the project you're working on so you can decide um, on which process because um, things like Helm charts and Jenkins operator makes it easier for you to manage your Jenkins installation rather than doing it um, with the YAML files where you have to um, manage this um, file separately. So, yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, so ease for ease, I would bias towards Helm or the operator. But if I want to control every last detail for a, a little prototype, YAML files. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yes. Now, were there things that surprised you while working? Oh, Oleg, did you have a question? Uh, no questions. I uh, just wanted to uh, thank for this project because, yeah, documentation uh, for Jenkins and uh, Kubernetes is very important. It's part of the public projects roadmap. And yeah, there was great uh, progress uh, over the past months. So uh, thanks a lot for that. Thank you. I have some questions about uh, contributing experience, but uh, yeah, we can uh, talk about it uh, later. So I will let uh, uh, Mark uh, finish his uh, question. Actually, that that those questions are great as well. So for mm -hmm. me, I'm I'm very interested in in your experience, Zina, contributing and any guidance you wanted to offer to others about what they might do as they consider contributing, as they consider helping the Jenkins project or some other open source project. Okay, so, um, well, surprises, I wouldn't really say surprises, just that I had some issues that I didn't envisage from the beginning, which is normal with every developer. You know that um, when you're writing code or you're working on anything technical, um, issues tends to come up that you didn't plan. So I'll say, yes, I had that, but surprises, well, mm, I don't know, because maybe because I, I already knew, okay, I was working with Kubernetes and I already saw Kubernetes as a huge project and Jenkins another huge project. So I already had expectations that I was going to see a lot. I was going to learn a lot. So I wouldn't say I was so surprised. Then um, for advice on people that like to work on open source projects, I'll say um, if you want to, you need to be ready to do your research because um, you wouldn't want to get on the project and be asking questions that are already available, um, questions on information that is readily available for you already. So you need to do your research first, um, try to engage with the community, ask questions when you have issues, it will help a lot and try and cause, I think when I try, when I start contributing to open source, um, I was shy actually, um, to ask questions. Um, I was in Outreachy um, 19 round. And I think that was one of my takeaway from that program to ask questions. There were times when I had issues, even with things like Git, and I felt too ashamed because I was like, how would I be working on open source projects and be having issue with something like Git? Even if I should be asking questions, it should be something about the project, not something about Git. But the truth is we are always learning. No matter how um, experienced you think you are, issues will pop up along the way that you've not come across. And sometimes you might have even come across them before, but you can't just remember how to solve it. So it's important that um, you ask questions, you know how to ask questions. It's important that you um, learn to collaborate because there can't be open source without collaboration. So um, I think that's, that's it for me. Research, ask questions, collaborate and write. And also, once you write, um, try and push it out for as much people as you can to review. Because um, when you finish writing, it might look perfect to you. But someone looking at it from another angle might see issues and things that you didn't see while you were writing. So it's very important that um, you um, push out your work for people also to review. 
Thank you. Thanks for the detailed answer. And yeah, during the Google season of talks, uh, did you communicate with other technical writers uh, or do you mostly isolate it uh, in the Jenkins community? So how did it work for you? Sorry, I didn't get your question. Okay. Did you communicate with other Google Season of Docs technical writers? Or were you mostly independent during this project? Mm. So I think he was mostly independent because I, I know um, other um, Google Season of Docs writers but with other projects. So um, what they were working on was not really related to what I was working on. So um, working on this project was majorly me, mentors. And um, obviously I had some help from um, other members of my organizations who were very knowledgeable in Jenkins and Kubernetes. So I asked them for help when I needed it, so yeah. Thank you. So are there are there things that you see as sort of next steps, you know, things that you might see as next steps for documenting Jenkins on Kubernetes, next steps for where should things go? What any any things you want to suggest there or recommend, hey, we should be doing these things. Okay, so um definitely we're still going to need more content on um uh, Jenkins.io um, documentation. We're going to need uh, more content on administering Jenkins on Kubernetes. We're going to need more content on um, Jenkins on cloud. Then um, aside that also, um, some other um, future plans, good future plans would be to have a Jenkins on Kubernetes solutions page, which could include um, tutorials on Jenkins on Kubernetes using tools like um, Katakoda, where people could actually um, work on the environment and get um, that um, experience of actually um, working on an environment, doing things with Jenkins on Kubernetes. So, yeah. Thank you. So I think we're at a point where we may be willing to open up to the audience, end the recording, and, and switch to open questions from the audience. Are there any panelist questions before we stop the recording and switch to open question and answer mode from the audience? Uh, I, this is Marky. I would just like to say, Zenop, you did an amazing job. Super, super proud of you. Also to the other mentors, Mark, awesome job. Uh, round of applause all around. Thank you so much, Marky. And thank you very much to the mentors for being so, so patient with me and being always ready to help. It's really, really motivated my success in this project a lot. The fact that I knew that the mentors were always there when I needed help and um, there was no putting me down. I never felt bad at any time point in time when I had issues because um, the atmosphere, the reception was very, very welcoming. Thank you so much. Great. I'd like to echo Marky's um, comments. Yeah, because like a lot of what I was going to ask her about like getting started, continuing writing in the project, I think we did a great job of like explaining the process of how to work with the documentation and get out there and um, the importance of working within the community and asking questions and stuff. That was great. And yeah, everything was wonderful. It was a great experience. So congrats. <laughs> the documentation looks wonderful. So thanks everyone. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. We, what we like to do at this point is we intentionally stop the recording so that we can open it up for anyone to ask questions. We'll make everyone live. Zenob, if you want to switch off the screen sharing, we'll we'll just go and let the cameras work. Okay. Then. And and okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Then we can we can actually ask questions openly in the forum. <laughs>